but I actually had to look it up to see exactly what it was. Okay. So it looks quite interesting. Do you do it a lot? I think you compete. Yeah, I'm at a tournament right now. I walked away from the tournament, which is over there. It's a professional tournament here in Atlanta. There's about 800 people. Um, and I travel around the United States playing. So next week I'm in Las Vegas. After that, Dallas. So, you know, I'm all over the country playing pickleball. So it's a lot of fun. Oh, well, good. Well, would you kind of like to tell us um, about yourself, how long they've been using you for scams? Sure. So um, I first found out I've been used, be used for scams maybe seven or eight years ago. So it's been a really long time um, where people would just like, hey, you sent me a, a message or whatever, just a random thing. I'm like, well, I didn't send you a message. Oh, yeah, it did. It was from your account. So um, people would just say, no, you did. I'm like, and, and and some people would swear like, yes, you did. You don't have to lie to me. I'm like, I'm not lying to you. I didn't send you anything, like, you know? And, and so I just thought it was um, odd. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything about it, you know? Right. Um, I think you said something about how many fake accounts you have so far. Well, yeah. So it just started like that, but, um, you know, it kept getting bigger and bigger. And then, uh, women were contacting me from all over the world and they're like, Hey, um, you know, why did you, why did you stop talking to me or here you are again, or where did you go? You liar. And so really it started turning into a lot of really mad women or women that thought I was their friend somehow. And then that, that started to accelerate quite a bit for a while. Um, and so then I, I started to post things and let people know. And for about the last six years, I, I post about quarterly. I just update everybody that knows me like, ah, oh, here's my current update. But I have a website on Instagram, as you know, that's called Scott Cufus Fake Accounts. And it has 14,000 different versions of me that have been, that actually have been discovered like over time. So, you know, thousands of them have been removed, but thousands of them are probably still there because they use my face and my kid's face um, with different names all over the world in almost every country, every dating platform, every social media platform, you know, there's videos of me and sites. And, and the way to spot a fake in general is first off, if, if you feel like someone's attracted to you and you don't know them, it's a little odd. Like that's just odd. And so I get women that swear they're in love with me all the time. And I'm like, I don't even know who you are. And I said, somebody's lying to you. Oh no, it's you. And so you just have to realize that it's not normal for people that have never met to love each other. So if someone says they love you or they're falling in love with you and they really haven't met you, that's a clue. The other is I'd say 80 or 90% of all of these fake ones they live it. They're on an oil rig. They're on an oil derrick. They're doing offshore work. They're in another country. They can't use their cell phone. So if somebody won't do a live video chat like we're doing right now, they're right. Alive. Like that. Like my first thing would be if anyone was interested to you, like all right, well then uh, go say go to your video. Go to your super. Go into your refrigerator. Open your refrigerator up and send me a <laughs> video in front of your refrigerator. Um, talking to me, like talk to me in front of your refrigerator so I can see a real person and just get a sense of if they can do exactly what you ask in, in an odd place. Like don't believe their pictures. Don't believe, you know, what their families, uh, everybody seems to be a widow. You know, there was a website that um, it, it, like a lot of times they'll, they'll be attached to groups and they're on an oil rig group. But if you go to the oil rig group, it's really odd. There'll be like 600 bachelors on this oil rig group that are all widows, you know? And I you know. Get, it's just a scam oil rig group. That's where all the scammers go to hide. So just, you know, protect, protect yourself. And um, just in general, you shouldn't trust people like that anyway. But if you're going to, then start playing games. If they ask you for money, say, if someone asks you, I always tell people, because I talk to a lot of ladies. I probably talk to you know, three to five women a week. Just, I try to be nice if they lost money or if it's real serious or if it's a daughter or sister, cousin, I try to be nice and talk to people when I can, but I let them know from now on, every time someone asks you for money, ask them for money, more money back. You know, I'm like, if someone's like, Hey, Hey, um, you know, can you send me $500? No, as a matter of fact, you should be sending me, you know, a thousand dollars. Can you send me a thousand dollars? Because I, you know, just, you just want to hear their response. I mean, it makes no normal sense that someone asks you that doesn't even know you. Like, if you need $500 for me, like, you must not have any friends. Like, do you want to date someone who has no friends? If they, don't, <laughs> if, they can't, if they don't have $500, they have no business dating you. Like, how are they going to take you out to lunch or get to know you? Exactly. Your you know, it's like just exactly. the little things that are called clues, which is don't, don't, 
don't date bro broke men. I'm just going to say right out of the gate. <laughs> like that just makes no sense. They've had a lot of bad decisions in their life. If they're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old and they have no money, then run away. <laughs> like that, like that, they've made bad decisions for a long time to have no money. So if they're going to prey on, on women that are lonely, they're bad people. So, you know, or just say, hey, I'll tell you what, uh, if they if they try to sell you some song and this, that, and the other, say, I'll tell you what, I'd love for you to talk to my daughter. Um, she, she's a police officer. Would you mind talking to her? And immediately <laughs> that'll shut down the conversation. If you just basically say anybody in your family is a police officer and they would like to talk to you first, is that okay? Um, see what happens to people. Or if they ask you, you know, for anything uh, personal, just say, no, do you mind sending me your social security number? Would you open up an account for me? Like, and do it in jest. You're obviously not going to do it. The point is everything they're asking from you is ridiculous. And you just need to either have a good sense of humor about it and, and have some fun pushing it back, realizing it's nothing. Or you need to get off the line immediately and just, you, you don't have to be afraid of deleting the person. So what I tell people yeah. is you should just let them know that you know they're a scammer, not to bother you anymore. And, and like, and just tell them they're despicable. I do it all the time. Sometimes people give me the phone numbers of the scammers. I call them personally and say, hi, you're stealing my identity and you're despicable. And your mom should, you, you, you're embarrassing your parents. You're embarrassing your mother. You're embarrassing your family. This is a horrible thing to do. You should, you know, I, I, I throw shame on them sometimes just so that they are aware of that. And then I just tell them, I said, you know, I, um, your IP address on your computer um, has, has been documented right here and you've been turned in by your neighbor. And like, you know what? Everyone thinks you're a scumbag. So leave me alone. And then I just, you know, I delete and block them and I don't care. And I just move on. Sometimes these people like to threaten you like, oh, I'll tell this or I'll tell that. They try to blackmail you. Right, I'm, I'm, right. Just go, go ahead. Like, please do. Like, you know, like, that'd be great. You know, like, go, go ahead. You're just a scammer. Everything you say has nothing to me. So don't buy into the lies. Don't buy into the hype. Don't buy into the blackmail, you know, all that stuff. And even if you, unfortunately, you're on here today, you're watching this, and maybe you've gone down that path, you know, like, uh, you know, you did give someone money. And, and I, I'm sorry, I know it happens, you know, just you cared for the person, right, and you were sympathetic, or, or maybe you sent them some pictures, right. So they're going to threaten you, some of you ladies send pictures and, you know, of, you know, that, you know, you don't want most people to see, you right. don't want your parents to see, your kids to see. So you did that already. So they threaten you with blackmail on it. Don't believe them for a second. Like that, that they don't care about that. They're, they don't care about your pictures. They care about your money. The only thing they care about is your money. So they're just going to exactly. threaten you with everything they have. But, you, you know, you them sending pictures to your family, they don't even get to see the family reactions. They're not going to do that for at all. They Because they, they probably don't have them. It doesn't really matter. And it's just like you have to trust your own gut and say, I just need to get rid of this person in my life and just block them. And, um, but as quickly, one of the biggest challenges I found is people have these secrets and you might be one of those people with a secret or you have a close friend who has a secret. Like she's told you she's in trouble and you don't know what to do. She's not listening to you. Like it's really important. You tell people if you're going through this, don't do this alone. Right. Don't be in because you, you know, you made a mistake and the guy's already taken $500 from you. You don't want to tell anybody. That's how people end up sending 2,000 and 4,000 and 10,000. And, you know, I had a lady send 30,000 and Ooh. I had a brokerage try to call me on the phone because a lady was going to wire me $91,000. Oh, goodness. And I, and I stopped it. So what happens is the, these guys beat on, oh, my daughter's, you know, birthday and I need a, a gift card for $50. And then it's like, I just need airfare to come see you, sweetie, and I'll pay you back. And then it's my mom needs this or my health needs this. And it keeps going up. The minute you give fifty dollars, they figure you're good for five hundred to a thousand. They're just going to keep going. Exactly. They ask for more. They just ask for more. It's like a mouse with cheese. You can't give a little bit of cheese. The mouse going to keep coming back to eat. Look for all the cheese you got. So um, if you got suckered in once, they're coming back for you. And sometimes they'll disappear because you block them, and they come back with another uh, person, exactly. a completely different person. And they know you're already suckered in the first time, so they try it a second time. So don't be suckered in the second time. Just let a good friend know. Like, tell what you, you have a best friend. Just tell them, man, I'm so embarrassed and gullible. You know, this happened to me. It's crazy. And if, if something like this happens again, I just want to tell you, remind me of this. Like, make yourself accountable to a good friend that will keep you accountable. 
to your, your vulnerable moments. We all have them. So it's right. okay. You know, it's okay. We care about people. We, we love people. We, we hope to be in love or we want something we're missing. We're, we're lonely. They're picking on that personality. And so that just means you're a sweet person and you care and you have a heart. But, but also be smart and just be accountable, you know? Right, right. Um, how does this affect your family, your children? I mean, it's, it's got to make you change a few things, doesn't it? Nothing. I don't care. Like, like everyone just knows it. Like, I'm bold with it. I talk about it all the time. Yeah. I just tell people all the time. Uh, where it more impacts, um, like, if, if you go out and date someone, then people will immediately, let's say, a lot of times people do Google searches, and then I just look like a scumbag. So, I mean, in the earlier days, it was just more women won't trust me because if they knew the truth or if I go on a date and say, you know, I'm actually a nice person, but I want you to be aware, like, there's a lot of me out in the world. Like, there's all <laughs> these personalities, and, you know, I don't want that to be odd to you. You know, sometimes they just come back, and that really is weird, and, like, maybe you are that scumbag, and that's that. And, and so just by being invulnerable, truthful, um, you know, some people don't want to deal with that and that's okay. And then, you know, dating, you know, having a girlfriend, I don't talk ever about uh, who I date because I don't want people bothering that person. They don't want to be bothered. So I, don't, I don't have any personal information on things like that on my sites. And that's because those people don't need to be, you know, uh, you know, bothered at all. My family's used to it. My mom gets um, invitations to join, you know, like, they, they actually contact my mom asking, you know, right. trying to pick up my mom uh, with their son, but they don't know that that's my mom, you know? So, um, you know, she just deletes the people and goes on their way, but it really doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't impact my kids are younger. It's, you know, they know all about it. It's just more of a family joke. We don't, you know, we're going to live our lives. We don't, we don't let scammers. That is scammers. good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we can't stop it. You know, our picture, right, my, right. my picture on the dark web, you know, there's tens of thousands of them out there. I, I could never retract them for the rest of my life. So I might as well tell a story and help other people. That, that works. Exactly. So, um, you said they did contact your mom, but I mean, have you ever been like publicly confronted about this other than just emailed, called or, or messaged? Well, not in terms of just some strange lady going, Hey, I know who you are, but, um, I have met with, uh, multiple ladies that um, got scammed and they happened to, I, you know, I told them I live in Orlando, Florida. I'm like, well, do you mind if I, if I come and meet you for real kind of thing? And so I've met a few people, you know, cautiously, um, you know, I, I say, well, you know, I'm open to it maybe, but um, in a public place, like, you know, you're, you're a stranger to me too. I don't even know you're true um, either, but I understand the problem and everything you went under. I'm a nice person. You know, we can meet at Panera or, you know, I just meet at a public coffee shop and say, you know, if you want to talk for 30 or 45 minutes to get it out of your system, you know, I'm open to that, you know, and then, and, and fortunately, you know, then Darla is an awesome person, you know, up in Canada, she's done a really good job. And so like, like certain people have turned it into their mission to save other women. So they've created websites, I've done videos for them, testimonials. Um, I help them prevent other women from going through this. So there's been some real positive things because of it. Um, but I, you know, that's, you know, those, those have been the positive things. I would say that never been confronted from a negative standpoint. Well, you know, that's really good. And actually you are one of the ones that is patient enough to take time to do this, but that is not saying we want anyone to keep, continue to talk, uh, you know, contact you. Yeah. Yeah. No. They contact I don't get it, but yeah, it's just, it happens sometimes. Yeah. We, we would like them to contact us. Yeah. So you are welcome to refer them to scam haters on Facebook yeah, or, do, or Instagram. But all the time. One. Yeah. I, I constantly talk about you guys. I posted a couple weeks ago, actually. And, um, you know, I'll post this, if this is a recording, I'll post the recording, um, you know, on my site here this next week and talk about it again. Cause I just think education is really important. I, I agree. The more, you know, <laughs> yeah. And, and actually to, you know, we have so many people say, you know, 40 years old and they get mom or dad a new device for Christmas or for their birthday, but yet they don't talk to them about internet safety. So, you know, all of this awareness would help, but also I, you know, beg people to talk about internet safety to anyone, children, adults, you know, whoever it may be. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I mean, just in general, if you, if you can't go, um, go to lunch with someone in your own hometown don't try to date them like long distance dating on the internet is really um, unsafe 
um, for lots of different reasons. Right. There's just many, many different reasons. So if, if somebody can't drive to you or fly to you and meet you somewhere in a public place with other people that are intelligent, then that's just not for you. I mean, you know, when you were younger and you were a mother, um, and you had children, you didn't want them talking to strangers. Well, the, the rules have never changed. The exactly. fact that you're a mother and you're older, don't talk to strangers. Like, hey, that's still good advice. It, it, it really is. And we say that all the time, stranger danger. <laughs> it's, it's about the same thing or just say no, but, but to strangers, not to, you know, the other stuff that the drugs and stuff they taught you in school. Yeah. So, you know, just say, just say no and stranger danger are like two huge points that we'd like to make. And also, you know, educate yourself, learn what to look for. Yeah. Anytime someone's too affectionate too quickly, that makes no sense. They don't know who you are. They don't know your past. Like anyone that, you know, just says they love you or they're going to change their life for you or they've always been looking for you or you're <laughs> perfect for them they don't know anything about you how could they be how could you be perfect you know you're exactly. obviously very imperfect we're all imperfect they don't, right. they don't know about you to not what they not like yet you know what i mean like we all have things people would be annoyed at one way or another so we just have to trust that um you know people are just going to flatter you for attention and you should just be patient. You know, that's the whole, that the whole point of dating is to get to know someone over a period of time to weed out right. what doesn't work for you. And what doesn't work for you should be someone who lives in another country on an oil well, and you know, who doesn't have cell connection. Like, excuse me, if you can't, if you don't have a phone that has cell connection or you wanted to say that your phone doesn't work, well, then if you can't afford to fix your phone, then I don't have time for you. Like, you know, just like, <laughs> Just simple things are just, you know, just straight up makes sense. Yep. You're right. And I, I know you mentioned um, how you would love to talk to somebody at, at Facebook or Meta to try and solve some of these problems. Um, unfortunately, right now, we have not heard anything, but I know you have a lot to say. I do. <laughs> I do. You know, I could help them with security, but the, you know, I would say that at least half of all the reports of my sites don't even get taken down. They say it doesn't violate their policies. Right. And, you know, it's un it's unfortunate because people, if they just had a link that would, every time someone reported, if it sent one to me that said that, you know, one of the your friends reported you uh, this site as being a false site. Is that true? Like, I get to verify it myself. I'd be able to say, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then that's like a double, like they're letting me know, I'm saying, yes, that's not correct. And it should immediately go down just like that. But what happens is the software, no human beings looking at it. So the software just does a quick look and says, oh, well, there's no negative pictures. There's no children on this page. Therefore, I don't know, it's a name and it's a picture. I guess it's okay. Right. Even if it's, you know, it's a lie, um, you know, they just don't have a, a really good protocol for, for that. And, and it should also, it should also have software when things get escalated where someone like myself has thousands and thousands of, of these at some point after 30 or 40 people, you know, sort of stealing your identity should go to a next level of security. It's more like, okay, anyone with a hundred or more, like these should be looked at. There should be an automated AI software that says, well, this is definitely Scott Cubis. We know that any other page that has that does not work for us like they would for President Trump or for Arnold Schwarzenegger or right. for Cher, whatever. Celebrities have um, artificial intelligence that protects and eliminates all of these sites uh, very quickly. And, you know, there, there comes a level that, you know, even lay people at some point should be protected as well. I agree. And, and I know we talked about facial recognition and I told you that Facebook is basically you know, done away with yeah. that at this time. And honestly, if they could use it for the purpose of taking down fakes, it would be great. Yeah, yeah. But all, all we can do is educate more. So anyway, right. hopefully, hopefully that helps some people out there and we gave them some ideas and thoughts. Just be extra cautious, ask extra questions, require people to send you videos in unique places. You learn a lot if you ask someone to send a video from their kitchen you can see if they have you know do they have any money and like what is it what do they eat and like like what's in the refrigerator how organized is it clean like if you ask people if you ask people to stand in their living room and do a video and spin around and talk so i can see your entire house at the same time like this is the kind of things other people would ask you thinking hey i'm really interested in you and they're trying to learn about you do you have money do you not have money 
well, use it against them. Like if someone's going to say they're this and that, say, you know, I don't believe in, in people like you. There's a lot of scammers. Why don't you get in your living room and talk, talk to me and spin around. Let me let me see what, how, how organized you are. You know, and then and as soon as somebody comes up with any excuse about why they can't, just delete them. Like, you don't, you don't have to be polite. They're not being polite. They're trying to oh, steal from you. That's exactly. It. Let go. Exactly. You do not have to be polite to them. They've stolen pictures from someone else. So, yeah. you know, identity theft. Yeah. And they're going to try and tell you lies and steal money from you. So, yeah, yeah. you don't have to be polite. Nope. So, any closing thoughts? No. Nope. Oh, that's it you know i just you know, hopefully this video uh, you can send it to someone as they might be going through a challenge um just be aware that everybody that's watching this knows people have gone through it so exactly. you're probably watching this because you went through it maybe but at the very least um maybe it's not just you like an awful lot more people you know in your same age group probably going through it so maybe post this post this video warn some people educate family members you know if everybody in here just you know posted on their pages we, we'd get another hundred thousand views and and definitely save a lot exactly. of grief exactly i agree so yeah. i guess you have to get back to your tournament yeah it's over there but i thought i'd break through and help you out i really appreciate it scott um you've been so easy for me to talk to for my first time so perfect, perfect. well thank you so much and you know god bless everybody you know i wish you you know love and happiness and success it comes with hard work, comes with patience, and, and it comes with trust. And, and don't be afraid to trust. I mean, I, I, I'm a trusting person. Um, you know, I'm cautiously trusting, but, you know, I technically try to trust people until someone gives me a reason not to. But, um, you know, you know, you can still hope out there for love. It exists and stuff. It's just not very often on the Internet. So just, you know, join a local meetup group. Find some clubs in your local area with people that have similar likes and try to associate with people that are real, just like the old days, you know, long before Facebook and social media 20 years ago, there's plenty of places to find nice people. And so they still exist today. There's even more places, more groups, you know, more meetups, you know, more clubs than there's ever been in life. And so you can get out there and really touch someone and, and hear someone and be empathetic to someone. So, you know, go out and really live your life. That that it's like, like I do here playing pickleball. That's way, 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 way more fun than being online. Well, I'd love to see you play one time. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right. All right. Thank you again. All right. God bless. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye.